Hi everyone, this is Shane Armand Road. Today we're going to help you install the EA app as a non-Steam game inside of Steam, no Lutris, nothing else required. Uh, let's get to it. The first thing you're going to do is go to the video description and find the two files you need to download. There's a mirror as well as a primary. The first file is the EA app installer itself. You could download that from the website if you'd like. I just like to use one that I know I worked with and works for this tutorial. You're also going to get a differential file. This is a bunch of files that the EA app is missing to work under Proton. So you're going to download both of these, which I have already done. You're going to end up with two files, the EA app installer and the EA app diff zip file. All right, so we are going to go ahead and add the installer as a non-Steam game. This works just like every other installer we've ever done for this channel. Downloads, turn off your filter, select EA app installer, and add to selected programs. Perfect, now we have the installer ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and flip on Proton Experimental for our compatibility. This is what I use to test. Other versions may work, but let's stick with what we know. Go ahead and run the application. This is a terrible, terrible launcher. The EA app is a terrible digital locker. I don't even know. I don't know whose big idea was to change out of origin, which actually worked, but listen, uh, we, must, uh, we must endure. Okay, so this is gonna go through a download process, an install process, and you get barking dogs as part of the equation because that's what my videos have in them, are barking dogs. Okay, um, so at some point in time, you're gonna get a dead empty screen, which is probably what your experience has been so far uh, while attempting to do this install. Right, you get this sort of bluish purple screen and nothing ever happens from here. So it's broken. Let's fix it. Go ahead and stop, confirm. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our compat data. We're gonna look for the most recent Proton prefix that was created, which is this one. This has our EA application installed in it. So we're gonna go into drive C. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and right click and extract and extract the archive here. Make sure we clean up after ourselves when we're done here. All right, and then we're gonna open that folder and you should see corresponding folders between these two locations. We're gonna go ahead and copy to. And you are gonna get collisions, right? Because we're replacing a whole bunch of files here. So we're gonna say apply to all, write into, apply to all, overwrite. And that should be it. Those files will copy over, sweet. Done and done. All right, so now we have an actual working client. So let's go back in here. Let's change our EA app launcher to point to, uh, so we got the drive C here. Let's back it up, drive C here. And I believe it's in program files, EA games, oh. electronic arts, EA desktop, And we're looking for eadesktop.exe. Perfect. So now this launcher is no longer the app installer. So we, it is actually the EA app. So let's go ahead and name it appropriately. Great. At this point, the EA app should actually run and you can log in. Let's find out. Okay, well, first off, you saw that it, it, it initiated some audio. All right, well, this is already better. It's got an EA at the top. Now, we got to let this sit here for a moment. This first run could take a moment, so let it sit here. It didn't fail. It's just doing stupid EA crap. And in a moment, it's going to pop up with the login screen. So this is normal. You may see this happen the first time you run it. I'm leaving all of this in and I'm not time compressing anything so that if you get something different or unusual, 
don't panic, this is normal. We're gonna go ahead and close out of the EA launcher and we're gonna launch it again. I don't know what it's up to. This EA launcher is complete crap. Um, people say they like it more than Origin. Uh, I don't know. It's making me mental, to be honest with you. So we'll go ahead and we'll launch it a second time, and again, we will wait. There you go. See, I told you it would work. All right, so we're going to go ahead and log in with our credentials. And again, mouse and keyboard, folks, I'm telling you, if you're going to do weird stuff like this, you're going to have to, you know, pay the entry fee. All right, so we're going to go ahead and connect. And at this point in time, we should never have to log back in again. Uh, and we should always default to this screen. So we'll give it a moment. There you go. See, the EA app works after all. Just requires a little bit of futzing. All right, so the first thing we're going to go in and do uh, is make sure that we can see our games. Right, this is all This is all so slow and kludgy. Um, again, your mileage may vary. You may see it faster, slower. Just understand that, um, yeah, it's, it's just not the greatest launcher in the world. Instead of waiting for this whole bunch of nonsense, let's go ahead and exit for now. Okay, so now we have an EA app. It actually launches and it logs us in. That's, that's great. So let's go ahead and return to uh, gaming mode and we'll continue the fun over there. All right, so we can go ahead and uh, set a control layout. We're gonna use mouse only. Trust me, this is the, what you wanna use. Don't worry about it. We're gonna be able to launch games independently in their own non-Steam game launchers that'll let you set the controls for whatever you want. So let's go back here for now. Uh, one more thing that I do wanna do though is to mount our external uh, drive. So I'm gonna use one of my other launchers such as Ubisoft, I'm gonna go in and cut and paste this. I will also provide this command inside of uh, my video description as well. So we're gonna copy that out. This is gonna allow us to use the SD card to download and access games. So back to the EA app, we're gonna paste that in. There's our launch options. Okay, go away, back, sweet. Now we're ready to go ahead and, and get busy doing some fun stuff. Now I have already installed Titanfall 2 to my SD card previously. So just the game files are over there. Uh, all things being considered, once I set my EA app up and assign it a proper downloads folder, over on my SD card, life should be pretty good. So let's do that next, once EA gets all logged in and they do their thing. All right, so you can see now we're inside the app. And uh, if you have frame rates or anything turned on, there is actually a hamburger menu back here. This is one of those things that it's like, hey, I don't have the hamburger menu. Well, yeah, you do, it's just hidden. All right, so we're in good shape here. Let me see if my collection comes up now. Okay, everything's a lot, a lot cleaner. I don't know what was going on before, but listen, uh, these things happen when you're shooting a video. So let's go to settings and let's walk through here and make some changes. Uh, let's see, so nothing here is required. Let's go to application. Uh, I turned off notification. I'm also turning off the in-game overlay because, you know, that can cause problems or it might complain about your driver. And we'll leave autoplay off. Download. So it's downloading right now to the Proton Prefix, which has like a 21 gigabyte limit. So if you try to install it here, it's not going to work. So instead, let's edit it. If you've mounted correctly, you should have an E-Drive, and on that E-Drive should be your SD card. Great. So I'm gonna make high C's my default download location. Awesome. Now I'm gonna go ahead, uh, let's see, is there anything else in here? Update games automatically, yes please. And no, we won't use that. Playtime, family time, okay, we should be good to go. All right. So now we can go to my collection. We're gonna go down and find Titanfall 2. And it said I last played yesterday, right? So let's go ahead and uh, if we download, hopefully it will pick everything up that's already there. All right, 67 required, blah, blah, blah. Next, agree to the user license, next. And hopefully this thing just checks the files and realizes they're all there and we're good to go. It was a lot easier on other launchers where you could just say, hey, let me find a located version of the game. So just another way that the EA app totally sucks. 
while this is doing its thing, if for some reason you see some weird flickering when you're in gaming mode, uh, I have seen this as well. Uh, the best thing you can do would be to um, resize the window into something slightly smaller than the full resolution, uh, close and reopen. That will probably uh, that will probably solve your problem. I had the same problem as well. It didn't obviously appear in the video, so I can't show you. Unfortunately, um, you know, listen, uh, we did what we could. Okay, so uh, real quick, it does look like it's going to want to re-download the game. Absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea why they would do that. So uh, I did have to hit pause and resume in order to get this whole process going. Um, so we're going to have to let it sit and download again, and then we'll be back to finish our video. All right, so finally Titanfall 2 downloaded. Uh, so we now have that in our installed games and we could run it from here. Well, let's go ahead and do it, why not? Um, let's go ahead and play it. Just do a quick, uh, a quick launch, make sure things read right. All right, so it is definitely launching. We'll go ahead and let it do a first time run just in case for some reason EA needs something for this, but it doesn't really matter. The way we're going to set this up as a dedicated non-Steam launcher title, it doesn't matter. All right, so Titanfall 2 works fine. Now we're ready to do the fun part. So let's go ahead and exit this cleanly. So you could exit here, which is kind of what I recommend. I know it's a pain, or of course you could exit through the Steam menu as well. Um, when it comes to launchers, I always kind of like say, listen, just exit out of the launcher proper. Let it do whatever cleanups or finalized actions it might have to do. Um, but if you're quick and in a hurry, you know, just closing it from the Steam menu is probably fine too. Okay, so now we need to return back to desktop mode so that we can do our magic with getting Titanfall to run as its own game. All right, we're back to desktop mode. And so what have we done so far? Well, so far we have a working EA app. We've installed Titanfall as a, uh, as a game inside of EA app, but it's installed on the SD card, so that's cool. So we're not using any extra space in this Proton prefix. Now it's time for us to add a new game. So we're gonna add Titanfall. We're gonna add a non-Steam game. We're gonna browse. We're gonna go out to the SD card media, high seas is where we're installing, and there's Titanfall 2. And let's change to all files. We get the EXE, there's Titanfall, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and add to selected programs and we have a Titanfall EXE. Now, it would probably run. We're gonna go ahead and set its compatibility to the same thing we set the launcher up to, which was to Proton Experimental. This would run. But it won't, well, it probably would run, but it won't run under the context of EA's app launcher, which means if there's any game updates, any cloud saves, any of that stuff, you're going to lose it. So we're not even going to bother. Well, we, need, we do need to click play once to build the Proton prefix, and then I'll stop it. Okay. If we go back to our compat data, we'll see just now a new Proton prefix was created specifically for Titanfall 2. Well, we don't need that Proton prefix. What we need is the EA Apps Proton prefix. So what we're gonna do is we are going to grab the Proton prefix folder number, then we're gonna delete it. Don't worry, this is just the crappy little Titanfall one that was made, we don't even need it. Now we're gonna right click, create new link to file or directory. We want to call, we're basically going to do a sim link that says when you're accessing Titanfall 2's Proton prefix, go over to this other prefix. Now I kind of made a mistake because I need to copy the, uh, I need that Proton prefixes folder. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new instance of Dolphin. Go back into Compat Data. Here's the one that I really need, right? So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab this entire folder name, go back to my other instance. All right, just to be clear what we're doing, we're saying, hey, Steam, when you launch Titanfall 2 and you're accessing this Proton prefix, it's just naturally, magically accessing this one. That's all we're doing. Boom. Okay, so we still have a Proton prefix, but it's really pointing to EA app. 
Could it really be that simple? <laughs> yeah, it actually it is. <laughs> All right, so now we can go ahead if we want to. This is a good time. We could go ahead and rename this to something more appropriate. You could add your box art, whatever you wanted to do. Uh, this is going to run and it's going to execute EA app properly as it does so, but let's check it out. Okay, so it definitely ran. Good. This is what we wanted. Perfect. So as you can see, EA is still running. It handles your, your cloud uh, saves, any of your downloads. All of that stuff would be fine. And again, um, you'll want to go ahead and exit this properly. So we make sure it's gone, it's gone from the sys tray, and now we're good. So we actually have a Titanfall now that's linked to EA app. Now we can, now let's go back to gaming mode and set up our controls. All right, we are now back in gaming mode. Let's go ahead and go into Titanfall. And uh, obviously Titanfall is a, is a first person shooter type game. So we don't really want, uh, we don't really want a mouse controller, right? So we're gonna go ahead and, you know, this is the point where you set it up the way that you like. In my case, uh, gamepad with joystick trackpad is fine. I am gonna enable the back buttons and I'm going to set them to run and melee. Perfect, now I don't have to reach those bumpers while I'm playing. And that's it. And we are ready to roll. Let's check it out one last time. Make sure our controller works as it should. I assume any updates would happen. I haven't actually gone through this process where an update happens, but it looks like we are in like super duper shape here. Let's just go ahead and make sure life is good with the controller and then we'll call it a day. Plays really damn good on the deck, by the way. All right, controller appears to be working okay. Awesome. All right, sweet. Well, that's it. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I know this is sort of a nuclear version, <laughs> basically replacing the entire app with one that we know works. Um, there will be a more elegant version somewhere down the road. EA will fix this. They'll come up with something in Proton compatibility. It will all be fine at some point. Uh, until then, we've got a great solution. I'm Shane Armonro. Thanks always so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys already know what to do. Thanks so much again for watching and take care.